blonde hair has always carried a certain light. If you were born with it, you are part of one of the rarest lineages in the human story. Only a small fraction of people today share this golden trait. Yet it has echoed across myth, history and art for thousands of years. From the frozen plains of ancient Siberia to the forests and fjords of Scandinavia, blonde hair has been more than a color. It is a trace of survival, migration and memory, a golden thread that connects you to the very earliest chapters of Europe's past. The golden spark of blonde hair begins not in Europe, but far to the east, in the frozen lands of ancient Siberia. Within the strands of our DNA, a single change occurred in the KITLG gene. This tiny shift reduced the melanin that colors our hair, and for the first time, darkness gave way to light. At the site of Afontova Gora, along the Yenisei River, archaeologists uncovered the remains of two females, one a teenage girl and the other an adult woman, who lived 17,000 years ago. Both carried this rare allele, the earliest evidence of blonde hair in human history. A fragile glow, preserved in bone and soil, waiting to travel west. From the frozen heart of Siberia, the blonde allele began its slow journey west. It moved not as an idea, but as blood carried in the bodies of the ancient North Eurasians. Across the endless grasslands of the steppe, they followed rivers, herds, and the rhythm of survival. With them, a rare mutation rode silently into history. By the Mesolithic Age, around 10,000 to 5,000 BC, this golden allele appeared among the eastern hunter-gatherers of Ukraine, Russia, and the Baltic. Their faces were mostly dark, their eyes often brown, but sometimes within their children, strands of pale gold broke through. Blonde hair was still only a fragile ember scattered across a vast continent. It flickered quietly, almost invisible against the tide of darker traits. Yet with every migration, it moved further west. Every family carried within them the chance of golden hair. These faint sparks laid the foundation for what would one day blaze across northern Europe. The golden thread had begun its weaving across rivers, across forests, across generations. When the Ice Age ended, the North opened to life again. Forests spread, rivers formed, and animals returned to fresh land. Into this world came the Western hunter-gatherers, with dark hair and striking blue eyes, moving up from the south. Centuries later, Eastern hunter-gatherers arrived from the east, carrying Siberian ancestry and the rare allele for blonde hair. In Scandinavia, these two peoples met. The blue eyes of the west and the golden gene of the east mixed for the first time. New families formed, and in their children, fair hair began to shine, sometimes with blue eyes, sometimes with brown, but no longer rare sparks. Now a visible trait. Scandinavia became a crossroads, 
And here, thousands of years ago, the roots of Europe's blonde hair were set. What began as a quiet meeting of hunters became a symbol that still glows in the north today. In the Bronze Age, around 3000 BC, a new wave of migrations reshaped Europe. From the Pontic Caspian steppe came the Yamnaya, riders and herders whose culture spread far and wide. For a time, many believed they carried blonde hair into Europe. But new studies reveal a different picture. Most Yamnaya had dark hair and eyes. The golden allele was rare among them. It was through their descendants, cultures like the corded ware in the north and the bell beakers in the west, that blonde hair grew more common. These groups mixed steppe ancestry with local Europeans, inheriting not only land and language, but also the light of blonde hair. By this age, Europe was changing. Metal, trade and new societies flourished, and among them, blonde hair began to appear more often. Still not universal, but no longer a flicker. Now a visible thread woven into Europe's tapestry. In the far north, survival shaped appearance. Long winters, dim skies and scarce sunlight made lighter features an advantage. Pale skin and blonde hair may have worked together to absorb more vitamin D, protecting health in a land where the sun was weak. Generation after generation, natural selection quietly favored this glow. But survival alone cannot explain blondness. Blonde hair also drew the human eye. It was unusual, radiant, unforgettable. Desire itself may have acted as a force of evolution. In Greece, the goddess Aphrodite was praised for her golden locks. In Rome, blondness became a symbol of nobility and allure. In Norse myth, the goddess Sif was crowned with flowing golden hair, a sign of fertility and life. Across cultures, attraction magnified what nature had begun, making blonde hair more than survival, but also desire. Together, these forces shaped blondness into both a trait and a symbol. It became biology and mythology woven into one. And yet blonde hair is not only Europe's story. On the Solomon Islands in the Pacific, some islanders also have naturally blonde hair but their blondness comes from a different mutation in the TYRP1 gene discovered in 2012. This means blonde hair evolved at least twice in human history, completely independently. A rare reminder that nature in its creativity can write the same color into the human story in different ways. Today, natural blonde hair is rare. Fewer than 2% of the world's population are born with it. The highest concentrations are still found in Scandinavia, Finland, the Baltic States and Iceland, where the ancient meeting of East and West once took place. Beyond Europe, blondness is far less common, though history has carried it abroad through migration, trade, and conquest. In places like North America, Australia and parts of South America, it survives in new generations, often mixed with other lineages. Blonde hair also follows the quiet laws of inheritance. If both parents carry the blonde allele, even if hidden, their child has a strong chance of being blonde. If only one parent carries it, the chances are lower, yet the trait can still appear, 
especially when other light pigment genes are present. Even two dark-haired parents may give birth to a blonde child if both pass down the hidden allele. Blondness is not guaranteed. It is a rare combination, a spark that may vanish for generations only to shine again in a child. From the frozen plains of Siberia to the deep forests of Scandinavia, blonde hair has traveled a long road. It began as a fragile spark in a single gene, carried quietly across migrations and centuries. At first rare, almost invisible, but over time, it found its place in the North. If you enjoyed this journey into the story of blonde hair, I invite you to explore my other videos on the deep history of our DNA. Don't forget to leave a comment, share your thoughts, and pass this story along to others. And if you found this fascinating, please share it. Does your natural hair color feel like a part of your own history? Let me know in the comments below.